Good evening and hello. My name is Renee Schimmer. I'm an offering manager here at HCL Software and uh, this evening I'll walk you through the global launch of uh, Connection 7, which we actually released <clears throat> five days ago. And I'll also give you a quick, uh, towards the end, quick update on the roadmap on what we're planning for Connections after the Connection 7 release. So let's go right ahead, set the stage a little bit, and then dive into the new features of Connection 7. So first of all, we all have to acknowledge that today's challenges are pretty unique, right? We're all in a world where we pretty much all work from home, as you can see here in my background, that's my home office. And working from home, especially for people who've never done it before, creates its own challenges. Um, and in terms of teams working together in organizations, it is less efficient than if you, you know, have your normal work environment. So those are new challenges. And what we believe is that keeping your teams together and connecting and communicating on the same page today is more difficult than it was a year ago. Um, at the same time, for organizations to communicate with all of their employees around the strategy. How is the organization that you're working for working towards the common goal, especially if a business needs to shift their focus, is also becoming a little bit more difficult because you can't just have that in-person town hall meetings, et cetera. So what we want to focus on for this discussion here today is how we can help you using Connection 7 to promote a better sense of community within your organization. And this is really something that today you can't afford to get wrong, right? Communities and the sense of community, employees working for organizations feeling that they're part of it is the critical challenge of today. So being able to provide an environment where employees feel connected to the organization, have a sense of morale when working and communicating um, without feeling disconnected is at the heart of what successful organizations implement today. And with Connection 7, we hope that we can provide the structure to close uh, this communication gap and information gap. So there are three areas that we're focusing on with Connection 7 that will make it easier for customers to um, jumpstart projects, make success repeatable by allowing to set up actual Connections communities much faster than before and by bringing in best practices learned from previous communities and projects and um, areas that people are working on into a new community. So everybody who joins that community has a kickstart, knows that they're part of the project, knows that they're part of the community and can get started with their work. Secondly, one other area that we see problems arising is that people are using tools to communicate um, like chats, etc in a way where a lot of information is stuck in silos. So if you're using a chat tool, a persistent chat tool, it's very helpful for one person chatting with the second person, but, it person, but it's very hard to then have additional people join in the conversation and share that knowledge, share that information with the broader community. So what we're doing with Connection 7 is integrating into the Microsoft 365 um, environment to break down those silos so you don't have siloed applications anymore, but really more of an integrated experience. And this is where the community hub connections at the center comes in to bring all that knowledge, the information, the people together in a community to make it easier to have that sense of community of people working within the organization. And lastly, we also, um, with that, make it easier to access and discover and make decisions, access and discover information and based on that, make decisions. So this is the very short um, setting of the stage of what the key themes are that we're focusing for Connection 7. 
Now let's take a little bit of a look at what it actually feels like. How in a demo scenario, a person can walk through connections, use connections, and then deliver on that promise of creating a sense of community in an environment where employees can collaborate together. So the scenario that we're walking through here is around a company called Woodburn Financial. Woodburn Financial is a multinational credit card company. And when the day comes that we can all go back to the office, in this scenario, we are already there, where Woodburn Financial is after the lockdown, is starting to bring people back to their offices. Woodburn has about 125 offices around the world. And some countries are a bit further along in opening up for business again than others. So in this scenario, we have the city of Auckland in New Zealand who has already opened their office, meaning the employees are not working from home anymore. They already started coming back to their local branch. And we are now going through the process of how other offices can start bringing their employees back to the office. So we meet Felix. Felix is the CIO of Woodburn Financial at the Frankfurt, Germany office. So it's his role now to bring all the local employees in the Frankfurt office back into the building and actually have people you know, stop working from home and work back in, in the, their branch that they have there. But in order to do that, he needs to communicate with everybody who's coming back in because everybody needs to understand the procedures, um, how to you know, do the temperature check when they come in, what are some other rules and regulations that they need to follow. So his task is to set up the community for the local employees in Frankfurt to do that. So let's go right at it. We'll actually walk through the scenario now. And first, what happens is that Felix gets a message from Woodburn Financial Corporate, right? So this entire initiative was planned by the corporate office, and he's being asked to do the same for Frankfurt. So what he does is he looks at the Auckland existing community to get a sense of what he should provide. And then he just goes ahead, starts, and creates a new community. Okay, so here we are. We are starting out in Teams. I have Teams open here in my browser, and this is Felix's view into Teams. And there you see a message from corporate that states that there is a, you know, the Auckland community. They have already gone back to the office. It's now Felix's turn to do that. So Felix clicks on the link to get to the Auckland RTO community. RTO stands for returning to office. So every office that brings back people is now setting up a community, and here it is. Welcome back to the Auckland office. And now Felix looks at this, right? He soaks it in, tries to understand what they did. He sees a Q&A list over there, which is um, questions and answered, common questions that are being asked. For example, what type of mask should I wear? He can click on that question to see what answer the Auckland office provided. And uh, as he does that, it opens up here in context. And there you see, well, actually, the corporate guy did provide an answer. So yes, Woodburn offices will provide mass, et cetera. So we can close it out. Felix takes another uh, look around to see what else is on here. It's a beautiful picture of the Auckland skyline. But over on the right, there is the local COVID response team, meaning these three people are the ones that are helping locally. There we have a SharePoint library. So the Auckland office apparently has SharePoint somewhere and they have some files in there they would like to bring into the community. He clicks on it and seamlessly the single sign on logs him in and now he can see the pictures, uh, so the files that are there. Scrolling further down, there are some key guidelines on wearing a mask, checking the temp, etc. And there's more down there. There's an app, what looks like an application called the daily health check. All right, we'll come back to that later. So scrolling back up, he has seen enough. He's getting a little nervous because there's a lot there, a lot of information. Um, he takes a look at the wiki section 
where he sees that there are actually really useful tips on how to practice social distancing. So he's thinking, okay, maybe I'll just um, copy and paste that later and put that into my Frankfurt community. So a lot there. And now he's thinking, well, there's no time like now. Let's go ahead and create a community. So on the community catalog page, which is this here, where he sees all the communities that he's access to, he can create a new community and he does so. Here we have the new community creation wizard. This wizard is brand new and guides the user through the initial steps of creating a new community. So he does that. RTO again stands for returning to office for the Frankfurt branch. So that's the title. You can add a description and then make the community public, private, or publicly listed. He starts out with a private community and then selects an image here, a thumbnail that will be presented with the community. Private means that nobody can join it, right? He has to invite people. But first, he wants to select a template, and that is another new capability in Connection 7, that we now support templates that not only push in the layout, the design, but also quite a bit more. And we'll step through that in the following screen. So he sees there is a template called returning to office. He selects that, and now he can add additional people that can help him to build out the community. So right now, he's working with Lucy and Ben, who are both also working out of the Frankfurt office. He adds them to the community at this point as owners as well. So only these three people can now access this community and make changes to it. So that's the team. We can now provide a tag, and he tags the community as RTO. And now we create the community and the first part is done. So we'll stop right here, go back and summarize what we've seen so far. While in the background, the community is being created, Felix was thinking, well, that was easy, right? So he has seen the community, has a good idea of what his task is now, what he should build for the Frankfurt community. He's still not quite sure where all the content that he needs should be coming from, but so far so good. Now in the next step, he needs to start building out the Frankfurt community local content, and he needs to get the, uh, the team, Lucy and Ben involved, to start um, working and fleshing out the actual community. So that's the next part of the demo. So we'll go back, and here we have the community as it was created from the template. There it is, RTO Frankfurt, and he is surprised to see that's already a lot of there. We already see the banner, we see the daily health check app on the left, a beautiful picture in the middle, which is obviously not Frankfurt, that's Sydney, so that has to be changed. That's why it says, please replace with local image on top there. We see the, the local response team is not the Frankfurt team, so that needs to be changed. So. He's getting a sense of uh, things that need to change, but he is surprised because the template not only pushed over the layout, he sees that even the Q&A forum that he saw and the wikis here are all already in there because corporate actually built that into the template already. So each local office doesn't have to start from scratch. All right, so now he goes ahead and jumps right in and starts with replacing the image for one with the Frankfurt um, skyline. Now I have to warn you, this is actually a JavaScript because the text is on top of the image. This is not one image built in Photoshop. This is actually just an image and a JavaScript puts the text on top of it. In order to change that, <clears throat> I'll have to jump into a little bit of uh, JavaScript code, but don't worry, um, we'll, we'll be quick. So here it is. And there is a URL to the picture for the Sydney uh, Opera House. So we'll take that out and paste in a picture that I have for Frankfurt. And now you see it reloading and there's the old part of Frankfurt. And then Felix also changes the headline to not welcome you back to your local office, but welcomes you back to the Frankfurt office. So we can do that right here in the, uh, in the window and you see the preview on the right, updates immediately, and we now have the right picture with the right text. So Felix can save this, and there you see <coughs> what it looks like on the screen. So that was easy.
Now he already has a bit of a local flavor here. Next up is changing the local context for the COVID response team. Again, every widget has three dots to where you can go in and manip manipulate what's shown in the widget. This here is called the people selector widget, which simply allows you to select people and display them with a, with a short profile card. So he removes uh, Heidi, she's corporate, and then types in his name. So Felix, starting right there, Felix Adams. So now you see the preview is starting to show. He now adds Lucy, and then lastly, he adds Ben. Um, so what the widget does is basically taking the names and displaying them with a picture coming from the connections profile and their email address and save it. So now every person connecting to this community can see who the local response team is. All right, he scrolls further down, <clears throat> sees what else is there. And so far, so very good. Okay, so there's more to do. Um, you see the customize button up on the left there that Felix is clicking right now. Now we actually get to behind the scenes how, where we can actually add additional apps and widgets to the page. So here you see, for example, the SharePoint library. This is how the Auckland office added it to their community landing page. Frankfurt doesn't use SharePoint, so he doesn't have to worry about it, but this is how you would add it to that community landing page and simply put in the URL to the, to the SharePoint library and that's it. Um, but before we add any other app, you'll see that the grid is highlighted now. So you see where these widgets sit. And Felix thinks that this one there with the four images that reminds people to wear a mask should be on top. So you can simply take it, drag it, and drop it, drop it into that open grid position that we had up on top. So now this row of images is on top. He thinks that's a good idea, so there we go. Now let's go ahead and add another application. So I'm clicking on the events widget here, which is now adding a widget called events to the first open spot in the grid here on the page. And as we scroll down, that was right here, is now called upcoming events, because Felix is holding um, all hands meetings with people in person after coming back to the office. So he wants to add that right to the landing page. So he clicks on the create new event button, calls it all hands meeting. It will be in the rear parking lot. So he puts in the location here, uh, selects a date and time. And then once he's done editing this and creating it, um, he will have the first event. He could make that recurring. He can have more events, etc. But we'll keep it short for this demo. And now, as you see, as we go back to the community landing page, we now have the upcoming events here for everybody to see so they know that there's something going on. Okay. Now, he wants to bring in uh, Lucy and Ben. So you see the Teams icon up in the upper right-hand corner. If you integrate connections with Teams, Microsoft Teams, you'll have that button on every page so you can share whatever uh, page you're on with a Teams channel. There's already one for the RTO Frankfurt team. So he puts that in there <laughs> and this window here takes the URL of the page that he's on, paste it, you, you can type in some additional text and now this page will be shared with Microsoft Teams. So he switches over back to his Teams uh, view here, up there, there it is. And there's the RTO Frankfurt channel as part of the returning to office team. And here we have the note that he just shared with this channel. So this way he gets other people who are following this channel um, and make them aware of this community now existing, but he wants to do a little bit more. He actually would like to have parts of this community, the forum and the wiki, for example, to show up right here in the Teams application. So he clicks the plus sign, selects connections as the app that he wants to integrate with and bring into his Teams channel and types in the name of the Frankfurt community the one that he just created. There it is, RTO Frankfurt. 
And now he can select which app he wants to add to the actual community. So there we have events, files, forums, highlights, uh, wiki. Let's start with the forum. Um, he shortens the name a little bit to RTO forum. And as he saves it, the actual forum app, which is the one with, with the Q&A, with the questions that we've seen inside the landing page, is now presented here within the Teams client. And this is not just you know the page showing, it's fully interactive. So now he goes ahead and does the same thing to add the wiki as well. So let's do that real quick. There's the Frankfurt community again. We have to select that first. Select the wiki, shorten the name a little bit, click save. And now we have the wiki as well displayed here as part of this channel. He does that because he knows that, that Lucy is mostly um, you know, looking a lot at, at Teams to get in there. So he thinks it might be a good idea to just bring the connections community into Teams so he can get the team involved right from there. Okay, so at this point, let's jump back to the slide again to do a quick recap. So far, we created the community. There's already a lot of content in there. Uh, we invited Lucy and Ben to take part in this process and did so by integrating with Teams. So now we switch roles and take a look at how Lucy goes about her part of the work here. So she's now aware, she's seen it, <laughs> and she will now add additional local content. But she does so on her iPad. So here we are. Um, Lucy is using her iPad and she opens up uh, Teams. Like I said, that's where uh, she hangs out a lot. So here's a chat with Felix, but she will actually now click over to the Teams um, area and there's the Frankfurt channel, which where, where Frank just shared the forum and the wiki. Uh, so she can actually now go into the forum. So under the more button, she sees the forum. And again, this is coming straight from connections, right? She can do all of this right here. There is the forum. And there is a question that has not been answered yet because corporate did not provide an answer because every office will be different. Some will have a cafeteria open where they serve food, others might not. For the Frankfurt office, she is actually now providing the answer. Uh, which is, yes, the cafeteria will be open. So that answer is now provided. She can save it. And this just represents the capability for the local teams to get a lot of content from the template, get started quickly, and then just tweak the little bit of content that they might need for the local office, right? So she's done that for the forum. Now she goes to the wiki. And on that same train of thought, she was working on or answering the question whether the cafeteria will be open. She looks at a couple of the wiki pages. This one looks interesting, how to practice social distancing, but she really wanted to get to the cafeteria menu and practices. There it is. So uh, she sees that for Friday, she would like to make a change because the Frankfurt office is working with two local food truck operators. So she would like to change the text here edit it out, paste some new text in, t letting everybody know that on Friday, food trucks are coming to the rear parking lot. She can save it. And again, you saw that right here within the Teams client, she has full access to this connections content and make changes right here on the fly. So now this page has been updated. She now provided um, the actual content for this local page. Okay, so now we come to the last part of the demo. It's Monday morning and the big day where everybody is now coming back to the office. So we're sticking with Lucy. She is on her way to the office. She's sitting in the bus. She has her cell phone with her. And uh, there are two things that she's thinking of. First, she saw that wiki with the social distancing guidelines. And she thinks that would be a great idea to print out and hang up in the hallways of the office 
just to give people a reminder on how to uh, practice social distancing. Secondly, um, there was this healthcare, the daily health check app. Every person who comes to the office at Woodburn Financial has to do that quick questionnaire and answer all the questions. So those are the two things that we'll see in the last part of the demo here. So let's go back. Now we're looking at her cell phone and she actually opens up the connections app on her phone, logs in and there we see um, a link to the Frankfurt community so she can go right in, there it is. And we're now looking at the Frankfurt community, but of course, since it's on a phone, it's smaller. So now we have a responsive design just showing uh, content in one row. And here's the wiki that she thought would be interesting. It's the how to practice social distancing at work. So she goes straight to it. There's the page. And now she would like to take this and export it as a PDF and print it. So clicking on the right dots in the upper right hand corner, she sees export as PDF. And what's really nice now with Connection 7, you can select the template, you can select the pages. She doesn't want all five pages of that wiki. She just wants that how to practice social distancing. She doesn't need a title page. She unchecks that. But she would like to print this with the HCL preview template. She selects that and then clicking on the Generate PDF button, Connections now takes just the content of that wiki page merges it with the template and there we have a beautiful page where you recognize the image and the content but now of course it looks completely different it took away the top navigation the header and the footer and all that and makes it very easy to print <coughs> any connections content um, so that can be used for other purposes like printing or archiving or sharing in different ways all right so the, as the bus gets closer to the office, she goes back to the landing page of the community and there was the daily health check app. So it's embedded right in the community. This is a Vault app, HCL Vault, low code um, application that the team built at corporate to allow people to just check uh, the answers to those questions whether you, you know, have you had fever, have you been in contact with somebody, and only if you click no to all four questions will you get the green light and now you can enter the office. And now Lucy can happily walk into the office and start working for the first time in months at the local branch. So that concludes the demo. I hope that um, gave you a good idea of how the new features all come together. And of course, Woodburn Financial, again, has 125 offices around the world. We saw the example of Auckland. We saw the example in more detail for Frankfurt. But all the other offices around the world will have to go through the same process, right? It's the same process for every office. So it is absolutely essential that we have a way to replicate this process, take the template of the community with the design and all the content, including wiki pages, forums, the Vault app, and push it out so each office has to spend as little time as possible to build this out. And this is where Connection 7 comes in to create that engaging experience where best practices flows into um, each instance as the offices around the world come back to the to the actual buildings. So what made it work? A uh, couple of moving parts here were essential. So first, the community creation wizard that we saw early on, walking through the steps of how to create a community, um, taking the user by the hand and providing the initial information to get started. Very easy. Second, the ability to provide templates to the end users that are managed by a template administrator, right? Only approved templates uh, will show um, in this catalog that we've seen. And these templates can include anything from content to applications to layout, which makes it so easy for users to get started right away without having to spend hours and hours trying to figure out how to make it look good. The integration with 
Microsoft. So if you are using M365, this will be very useful, right? Because you can now bridge the gap between the two systems <coughs> and fill some, some gaps within M365 and get people out of the silo that Teams, for example, creates. Okay, now, as a summary, repeatable success with the templates, jumpstarting the projects with the wizard and promoting engagement with the updated community landing page that I showed you and how it's much easier now to create a good looking website, add widgets, add apps, configure them, makes it really easy to create communities. When it comes to the integration with Microsoft, I want to mention a couple of other things that I haven't talked about yet. So we saw the integration with Teams. I think that is pretty clear on, on what we can do here. Um, I did show you briefly the ability to show a SharePoint library within a community. What I haven't mentioned is the integration with Outlook uh, clients. And this is something that we rewrote from the ground up. We had Outlook integration before, but now we are bringing out a completely new version um, that allows you to run the Outlook integration with connections on a Windows machine, a Mac, as well as in the browser. So that will allow you to take an email, save it into connections as a to-do, as an activity, as a file in a community, et cetera. And you can also send emails and easily attach a file from connections as a shared link or as an actual attachment. All right, so there's more around the uh, Office integration here that I didn't show. One additional area that we worked on for connections um, that I want you to make you aware of is around the ease of which you can actually install and deploy connections. We have put together a list of what's called Ansible scripts that will reduce the time it takes to install connections with everything from the operating system to the to WAS, to the database, to the component pack with all its new capabilities in a matter of just two and a half hours, right? Gone are the days where you had to install all these individual components and configure them one by one sequentially. You can now <coughs> use one of our scripts and it will deploy everything much, much faster, pre-configured. And also for the component pack, you can now deploy it to Amazon EKS or uh, Red Hat OpenShift. So all of this really means that the process of getting connections up and running or to upgrade your existing environment to connection seven is going to be much faster. So how do we conclude this part of the presentation? Connections is all about the people, right? Bringing people together, creating that sense of community where it's easier for people, especially working remotely, to still feel like they're working for the company they're working for and to share expertise and contribute to the company's culture. That is what's at the core of Connections and I hope that came across in this part. For the next part of the presentation, I want to give you a quick outlook on what we're working on for Connections coming next. So Connection 7 was released five days ago, December 4. It's available. Um, and we are starting to work on what's coming next. Now, let's, let's take a couple of steps back. What is Connections and where does it fit in the market? Connections has been around for about 10 years, a little more. And it has always been positioned in the market mostly as an enterprise social network. Right? An enterprise social network, when that category was defined, an analyst uh, used it to describe what, what tools like connections and competitors were doing, was around taking or providing an, 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 a tool for people to network with each other, to find expertise, um, to post updates about what they're doing, and that is still true today. However, we see a lot of customers using connections in many different ways. 
we know that there are a number of customers who use connections and the files component, <clears throat> my files, community files, extensively for file sync and share, right? So that's another segment that connections does play in. Um, we have other customers, especially together with the um, connections engagement center, using it to run their intranet, their communication platform, top down to keep or to have management keep everybody on top of what the, the company is doing and to have intranet uh, landing pages for each department, et cetera. So expertise locator is another capability within connections where <clears throat> it's very easy to find an expert if you want to staff a project and find the right people. All of these things connections does. The question is, when we decide how to develop the features for the next big connections release, <clears throat> which of those <clears throat> do we take as a guiding principle and focus our efforts? Like I said, we wanted to take a step back and find out <clears throat> which of these is the one that every customer is waiting for. Like I said, some customers use it for this, some for others, but there's gotta be a thing that everybody is using the one common denominator of what everybody does with connections. And to us, in talking to many customers and partners, everybody is using the community. And we think we have a really good opportunity to position connections as the enterprise community platform where people can create the communities, bring colleagues together to work on a set of tasks to form communities of interest, et cetera, and build everything around it. And if you look at the market today, there isn't really much in terms of enterprise community platforms. So this is a great opportunity for us to make sure that with all the different tools that are out there in the market, we add something to the mix that adds value, right? Con Connections is not a chat tool. It's not a meeting tool. It's not a file share tool. Really, when you look at it, what it does best and what every customer is using is the community. So with that, um, let's <clears throat> figure out what the enterprise community platform actually brings to the table. It allows you to easily create and share content, but unlike in a chat, for example, where you just share it with one person or two, three people that are in the same chat and nobody else finds it, when you share content in a community and you, the community is public, everybody in the organization can benefit from it. That is an incredibly important differentiator. You can locate experts. You can find people based on their interest, right? Where you actually run into people by accident, not because you know their name and reach out to them. No, you can find people based on what they posted um, connections makes recommendation who you should connect with. So that creates that sense of community. You can discover and network with people and it's all about creating and exchanging ideas. That's what connections fosters. So I have a list here of five different use cases um, where you can build departmental communities where um, an HR department, for example, can put out information to the rest of the organization. Everybody knows they can trust this information because it's coming straight from the Department for Human Resources. They know this is the right information. You can use communities to set up training environments, right? If, if you have certain areas where you want people to get trained on topics, you can do that with the community and so forth. There are a number of these examples that you see here where we know customers are using connections to do all these things well. So now let's talk about the actual roadmap, where we are and what's coming next. This point of what I just talked about is the, the guiding North Star, if you will, for the things that we're doing moving forward. So let's take one step back to 2019 where we released Connections 6.5. And with that release, we focused on adoption and engagement. We introduced capabilities called Touchpoint, Sidebar, Highlights, and Invite. These four components are all around making it easier to get 
familiar with connections, start using it, and stay engaged with it. So it's all about user experience in terms of you know, making it easier to use. With Connection 7, the release we just published, we make it all about integration and repeatable success. Tailored experience is everything around what I showed you in the community, creating the community quickly, inheriting a lot of content and layout from the template, uh, using the new landing page and positioning the apps and wizards uh, widgets on the page makes it so much easier to build repeatable success with communities. But then we have the integration aspect where for this release, we focused on uh, Microsoft 365. Of course, if you don't use Microsoft, you're wondering, well, what does that do for me, right? And you're right, it probably won't do much for you. However, of course, all the integration points that I've shown you here for M365, um, we are working towards providing uh, the same and more integration points with the HCL portfolio, right? So stay tuned for more integrations coming here um, with our own products, of course. And then we have the PDF export that um, we walked through quickly to print that wiki page. So now let's take a look forward. What are we focusing on for the next year? For the next year, our big effort will be around the user experience. <clears throat> we will completely rebuild the user experience framework, the front end to the product, what connections will look and feel like the ability to build a user experience that scales uh, from device to device that has a responsive design and a more uh, and an updated look um, that represents the actual power of connections and while doing that rethinking how users go through the product this will be a big effort this year um, where you will see a very different um, user experience as an outcome, where we want to focus on all the things that make connections powerful and bring them to the front in much more meaningful way, right? So we will focus on usability. We will focus on consistency across all the different apps. So you have the same file upload dialogue everywhere. Uh, we'll um, focus in on how you discover, search, and find content, and how you can share. So this UX rework will not mean that we just use different colors and differently shaped buttons. No, this really means that we're fully rewriting the front end. So while doing that, and after doing that, we will continue, of course, uh, working towards achieving that enterprise community platform positioning. So while we're rewriting the UX framework, of course, we'll do everything with the thought in the back of our head that the community, how do you manage a community, right? How do you get more engagement with the community? How you integrate other applications into the community are all going to be part of the process to get to that point where the community is clearly the one thing that everybody leverages, understands, and does well. So I have a screenshot here to the left is uh, Connections Today. And on the right is a design mock-up. Uh, so this is just an example, right? This does not necessarily represent uh, what it will look like um, in about 12 months from now. But we're really taking a very fresh look at Connections to see where we can optimize the experience. Um, in terms of how we're building the new experience, so like I said, it's going to be a ground up uh, rewrite. So we're going to um, remove all the Dojo components. We'll build in um, a responsive UI across uh, the entire connections experience. Uh, so it scales from you know your desktop to your phone, to your tablet, et cetera. And we will provide a new set of, of JSON APIs to make sure that it can be integrated easily with other um, experiences. All right, I think that brings me
to about the end of my allotted time for the presentation section, I do want to make sure that everybody understands that this next step, the UX redesign, is one that we want to get take together with our customers and partners. Right? We will provide previews. We will have design sessions with customers to make sure that we validate the direction that we're taking the product because we want to make sure that all the existing customers who are using connections will feel good about the changes that we're making and representing a way forward for their existing users to stay engaged with connections. So that's an ongoing process where we will reach out, we'll actually send out a survey to kick this process off in the next few weeks. Uh, and then, as a follow-up to the, that survey, we'll have another round of, of uh, questions and discussions to make sure we develop the, the framework, the new UX, in the right way. With that, uh, I want to thank you for attending. We're opening, up, uh, opening it up for questions now. So I'll pause here and see if there are any questions that I can answer. Рене, спасибо огромное вам за эту презентацию. Рене, thank you very much for this presentation. Особо хочу отметить то, что лично мне всегда симпатизируют компании, которые... And I would like to say, first of all, that I always uh, like the companies... Которые ставят человека и вообще людей именно во главу uh, при разработке продуктов и помогают упрощать нам жизнь. Uh, that focus on people when developing products and do their best to simplify our lives. У нас есть вопрос от участника, можно ли Connection 7 поставить в облако в режиме мультитенанси? We have a question from one, one of the participants, whether the Connection 7 can be installed uh, to the cloud in the multi-tenancy mode. So just making sure I don't hear anything in English. I, I don't know if you're asking yeah. questions. Я, к сожалению, не слышал перевода вашего вопроса. I just hear you speak in Russian, but I don't. I heard multi-tenancy, so that sounded like a question. But... <laughs> <laughs> да, я слышал ваш вопрос на русском, но, к сожалению, не слышал перевода. Услышал только знакомое слово multi-tenancy. So I, I don't think we can hear the interpreter. Uh, Мне кажется, so... мы не можем, наверное, переводчика слышать. Yes, maybe, but now I will try to explain you on English. So, uh, firstly, I say that I love companies uh, which uh, take people to the head of their project and try to make our life more easily and more comfortable with uh, such products like uh, Connect Connection 7. Uh, and the uh, question was about, is it possible to install uh, connection seven uh, in uh, mode multi tenancy. Okay, yep, very good question. So, connections, um, what I've shown you right now is um, available to download for a single tenant environment. So, that's that. But we also have a multi tenant version of connections. And we work with cloud hosting partners, uh, the CHMSPs as we call them. So we have a number of cloud hosting partners. Um, and I think some of them are actually sponsors as well, uh, who actually host a connections instance in a multi-tenant environment in case you want to run your own uh, private or hosted cloud. So yes, we do that, we have that available. Super. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we answer on this question. Your, uh, so again, thanks from uh, all uh, Ernuk team for participating uh, in this forum. Very welcome. See you. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye bye.